Okay, so my name is Esther Johnson. I'm an artist and filmmaker. Um, I have a work called Hinterland in the show called Wilderness here at the New Art Gallery, Walsall. So Hinterland is um, a 16 millimetre film that I made when I was a student at the Royal College of Art. The work looks at um, a small community that live on what's called the, the, called the Holderness Coast, which is the fastest eroding coastline in Europe. Um, I wanted to make this film because it was an area that I'd visited quite a lot as a child and it was just this incredible sort of mysterious interesting landscape and I always wondered who would live in such an environment. So the Holderness coastline um, has a history of uh, plotland, the plotland movement from around about the 1930s, the first plotland um, little shacks, holiday homes um, were built and there's been a community that's lived there um, ever since. So the Holderness coastline and this um, particular area called Skipsy was a place that I'd visited on, on kind of country drives as a kid and I was always, I was always kind of um, drawn to this ineffable sort of feeling of this landscape. It had this kind of mysterious um, a kind of melancholic feel about it. And I always was interested who would live there, what was it like to live in such an environment. Um, and this was the reason I really wanted to go back when I was a student. I'd, I'd gone back home to visit my parents, we'd gone on a drive, and, um, and I'd started to chat to some of the people that lived there, really. So and that's what really led to me wanting to make a work there. So I went with my Bolex camera, um, a little recorder, um, and wanted to try and discover what it was like to live there. So I interviewed some of the people and spent time with them. And over the years, I've gone back intermittently um, to see how it's changed, to see if the people that live there have changed or whether their opinions of what it's like to live there has changed. Um, when I initially went, um, they'd just got, some of them had just got solar radio, um, but they didn't have uh, electricity um, or various other um, uh, utilities. But now they, you know, they, they have a lot more kind of, a, there's much more of a sustainable kind of setup now there. So they're like a lot more organized. Um, but what you do have is that people are more in static caravans rather than in the homemade shacks. And a lot of that's to do with legalities and the council, etc., etc. My film, Hinterland, it looks at um, a particular community that live on the Holderness coastline. And there's a focus on three particular people that live there. Saffron, Charlie um, and Peter. And what you get is the, the voices um, of these people who live in this unique environment and tell us kind of why um, they live there, what it is about living in such a place. One of the people, Charlie, had actually travelled around the country to try and find the, the most remotest place that he could find to live. Um, but also there's this connection with um, the sea and with the with nature really um and kind of nature's attrition so the the cliffs are the pounding of the waves against the cliffs and each year seeing your environment um absolutely change dramatically so in, in the film charlie talks about um and this film was made in 2000 and two and he talks about um, that he felt like he only had about 15 years left to um, for his house to still exist on the cliff before the sea took it away um, and I always thought that this it would be interesting to go back um, to the Holderness coast to see what happened after 15 years so last year I went back and um, I created a follow-up work called Retreat in the Line, which looked at how the landscape had changed. And we think it's roughly around about 25 metres have eroded um, since the initial film. So what you see in, in Hinterland, a lot of these homemade um, houses, huts, um, now lo no longer exist. So now what you have is more a series of static caravans um, and then there's kind of 
uh, one or two original huts, but, but the council won't allow people to live in those because they are really crumbling. But they've been kind of preserved um, as the original huts from around about the 1930s. So as an artist and filmmaker, my work is sort of crosses the intersect. It's at the intersection of artist, film, and video and documentary. I'm particularly interested in people's relationships to their environment, and I'm also really interested in um, at oral history and people's the kind of the stories behind the stories, the hidden stories that we don't hear about, stories on uh, of people on the margins, and that's what I was really tapping into for this work hinterland.